Das, meine Damen und Herren, sind The White Lies aus London. 2009 ging ihre Karriere so richtig los mit ihrem ersten Album, ging sofort in England auf Platz Nummer 1. So you really had a great start with your career in 2009. Your debut album went straight to number one in the UK. And now you're back in Germany with your second album. What really has changed in the meantime? Um, well, I think uh, on a personal level, not not a huge amount. We're still the same people. I think we still um, we still enjoy playing music. We're still just as excited to come to places like Cologne as, as we ever have been. But um, I think we've we've uh, grown up a fair bit as musicians. I, I feel like we're better at playing our instruments. We're better at performing, and and I think I think we've made a, a better album than our first with our second. So yeah. But concerning also traveling wise, I mean, when you think back now uh, in 2008, you've you've been uh, really around the globe already. But is it now a little bit more luxurious or a little bit more comfortable for you? No, yeah, I wish it was. Um, we've still never flown business class on a single flight, so we're not doing that well yet. I think um, I think also we are kind of sensible with our money. I don't think we would would ever try and I don't know be particularly rock star about anything. It's just not who we are. But um, you know, we've been to we've been to some amazing places and uh, you know, three years has gone by very quickly considering considering how long that actually is. Is there really one moment or one memory which sticks out where you would say, well this it was worth to do everything just for this one show or this one city you you've seen or whatever? Well, we did we did a few shows now in in Wembley Stadium in London, and that's well, you th could have gone there, there. I don't know by bicycle, right? Well, yeah, it's pretty local. And actually, after one of the shows, one of the Coldplay supports, we we got to go in helicopters because we had another show that night. So we we took helicopters over London down to Brighton, and that was uh, actually that was pretty rock star. We had some champagne in a had some champagne in a helicopter. It's pretty pretty big deal actually. Yeah, <laughs> better than business class. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, Charles, you've write the uh, lyrics and um, Harry's going to sing them. So what's it like for you when you are on stage and when you look down on the crowd and the people sing your lyrics back and uh, you can, I guess, even enjoy it more than Harry, right? <laughs> uh, in some ways, yeah. I don't, I don't really know how, how Harry does it every night, having the energy to, uh, you know, to sing in that way um, and play guitar at the same time. It's uh, I'm pretty special. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty special. Um, but yeah, no, it's a it's a very luxurious um, scenario for someone that likes to write, um, you know, lyrics or, or any kind of creative writing to really have the focus taken away from you a little bit, so that um, you know the words and the meaning of, of those of those words almost has more air to breathe. I think if you're always singing your own words, you're sort of choking them a little bit. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's really nice. It's really really good for me. So, and what is it like for you? I mean, this was now his opinion. What's it like for you to sing someone else's words? Uh, it's fine, yeah, it's good fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't write lyrics to save my life, so to, to have some, some great lyrics put in front of you to, to sing and, and to sing them every night is a great feeling. It's lovely, yeah. And what has changed also during, uh, because of your fans? I mean, um, you really had a big uh, response already, really, with the first album, but um, now has it been growing? Did it change in some reason? Um, I think I think our fan by our fan base has been gradually growing around the whole world, actually, um, and I, hopefully it will it will continue to do so. Um, but yeah, you know, especially in Europe, I feel like we're playing bigger shows than we ever have, and it's it's really exciting. So uh, perhaps even more so than the UK, I feel like we're, our band is growing over here. Yeah, it's great. So, um, because you've been on the tour, on the road now for th more than last three years, um, and you've been to Cologne also a couple of times, do you really have memories about that city? And do you can you enjoy it to to travel and to come to different cities? I think, uh, without sounding like a tourist and sounding really cheesy, the the cathedral in Cologne is is one of the most memorable buildings in the world. I think, and uh, me and Charles had a fantastic time going up it yesterday. A f fantastic time, also a very exhausting time. It is quite a long way. But, um, but yeah, I, I, yeah I've, it, it's got such a lot of history, this place, and, and it's, such a, it's a really cool place to hang out. Great restaurants, great, great art galleries, and, and especially the, the modern art gallery that we, we yeah. ate lunch in yesterday, in fact. Yeah, no, we have a really good time here. It's lovely. So what did you do in the meantime when they hiked up the, the cathedral? <laughs> I had a depressing day yesterday. Oh, what happened? Me and our keyboard player Tommy uh, wanted to go and watch Bayern Leverkusen versus Schalke. So we got the train and we went all the way over there. It took about an hour to get there. And then we went to buy a ticket and it was sold out. 
so we had to, we wasted all our day on on German trains yesterday, <laughs> which is kind of nice, better than better than British trains. But it was it was a little bit frustrating because it was a good match as well because I saw a bit of it. Yeah. Well, no, the Bayer Leverkusen Stadium is just too small, so that really was bad luck. <laughs> That's a beautiful stadium, actually. It's a very cool, very cool building. I, I looked at your MySpace site, and there is a uh, gig announced for April 4th in Tokyo. Do you know that you will play actually in Tokyo? Or could you imagine right now, because of this, um, well, cat catastrophe which happened in, in Japan with the tsunami and the earthquake and the radioactivity, can you imagine playing there? Uh, no, oh, actually, it's not really. I think the main problems they're experiencing at the moment in Tokyo, because uh, it wasn't the epicenter of the earthquake, uh, just in terms of deliveries and and um, and yeah, getting around the city and stuff. I think people are still sort of hesitant to go back to work. So yeah, we are. We have postponed that show, but we only postponed it. We are going to play later on in the year. Okay. Yeah. So, but can you really follow the news while you are on tour? Do you keep track what's happening in the world? You can very easily. I mean, the internet is um, is pretty pretty. Uh, comprehensive and very up-to-date usually I mean um, when well, yeah when the earthquake struck um, Jack had already seen you know pretty shortly after it had happened really on the you know the BBC is is a pretty good institution uh, if I do say so myself um, but um, the yes <laughs> um, we all pay for the BBC um, yeah so no it's okay but I mean it, it's tricky sometimes I remember I believe when the when the elections were happening last um, in the United Kingdom, we were away, and seeing a lot of talk all the time between our friends as well as just you know on the news, and and feeling slightly out of the loop with that um, when you're not really in London or in, in involved at all. So, um, but yeah, it's fine. You you can you can you can make a good effort. So, um, what will you really do the next weeks or month? Will you be constantly on the road and touring? Um, we have actually a, a couple of a, a short amount of time off. We're going, we're going, we're all going away on holiday, which is unusual. Uh, probably the first holiday in two years I think yeah. I've had. Where will you go? Uh, I'm going to go to Yosemite National Park in in North America, which should be amazing. Yeah, I can't wait. But. Um, but yeah, then the rest of the year is just, is just uh, I suppose, shows really. Yeah, we're, we're playing a lot of festivals in the summer and, uh, and, and then just trying to, I guess, trying to play in some slightly bigger rooms at the end of the year. And, and we're looking forward to, to every bit of it. It's going to be great. So please explain to someone who never really saw a show of The White Lies, what can he or she expect tonight? The three of us <laughs> set up in a slightly different position with me in the middle and back a little bit on a drum kit and then two other people on a stage. Uh, with some flashing lights and uh, some very loud music uh, and hopefully a lot of fun. I think we tend to treat our, our live shows as uh, enjoyable experiences and you know that's what you want the audience to go home thinking, you know, thinking they've had a good time. Uh, so I think they can expect an exciting version of recorded White Lies, song, White Lies songs. Do you want to add anything? Um... Uh, no, no. I think that I think that I think that sums it up. Yeah, we're all, all looking to have a pretty good time, pretty great time. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're really looking forward to see you tonight here at the Life Music Hall in Cologne, the White Lies.